Hi, George here. In Photoshop Elements 2023, they removed or changed several of the options inside of some of the guided edits. Let's take a look at the pattern brush where they have made some big changes on what's available with that brush. We'll go up here to edit and then guided edits right here. And you find that under the fun edits and it's right down here. Click on the pattern brush and here's a pattern brush. And you notice over here on the right hand side, quite a few things have gone away in here. The faded out hearts are new. These three are new in here. This one is an improvement on one of the original images. This is original. The star is new. These leaves are new. These are new. These little seed things. This stuff is new. That's original. These are all new in here. These are all new. So is that. This replaces a different butterfly from before. This replaces the previous confetti. And these are both from the original. So basically about half of what was in here before is gone and several more have been added in and several more variations. So it depends on whether or not some of these were your favorites and they're now gone or some of these new ones will become new favorites. I personally like these swirls down here. I think these are really fun. But all in all, it's still a real fun tool to use. Now the way you use this is that you simply choose one of your patterns in here and make sure you have Protect Subject selected. What happens here is that Photoshop Elements goes in, it finds where the subject is, puts a mask over the subject. You don't see any of this stuff happening, of course. And then it puts the patterns in behind the subject. Without this checked, the pattern will go on front of the subject. So it depends upon where you want the pattern. If you want it behind or in front of or overlapping the subject, it's up to you. Let's do one of our swirls down here. I'll just grab this kind of a swirly thing right here. And you can either paint with this or you can fill the whole area with this. You can choose your size. You can have a scattering amount. I'm going to choose a bit of a scattering, a bit larger size. And then simply come in here and then paint this in like that. And we have some nice kind of bubbles happening. And you'll see that they're in behind the character in here, in behind our subject. That is the protect subject happening. Now, if I come in and do some in the background like this, and then I unprotect the subject. They then come in front of the subject like that. So you have that ability to show or hide them on the subject. So it's really up to you whether you want those on top or not. But it's a fun and easy to use. Now, if we scroll down a little bit, you can come in here and erase some of the patterns. Click on Pattern Eraser Tool. Choose your brush size. And you can then erase some of the things that are overlapping and leave other ones. So I could have some of this stuff here and some of this stuff not. And that allows me to have most of the effect in behind with just a few coming on top. And I think that's a real interesting effect that way. It has a bit more of a realistic look to it. There we go. And you also can add a bit of a blur if you want to, to these into the background. I'll leave the blur off. If you use a blur, you can refine that blur, but there's no need to. And then once you're happy with the effect, come down to Next, and then choose where you want to take this image after that point. Either save it, save it as something else, go over to Quick Edit or Expert Mode, or take it right out to a print or Flickr or Twitter. I always go to expert mode and that gives me some more options at this point. Notice in here that we have our subject here selected. Here's our background right there. That's our background mask. And this top layer, this is the bubble layer. So I can come in here and do more work on that layer at this point once we're inside of expert mode. I love some of these new patterns. I actually liked the old confetti pattern, but you know, things change. So I just kind of go with that. I can still go back to an earlier version of Photoshop Elements and use that pattern on the earlier version. One of the nice things about Photoshop Elements is when you install a new version, they don't erase or uninstall the older version. So you can still go back and use that one. In Photoshop Elements 2023, they've added in some new options and some new backgrounds and so forth inside some of the added edits. I'm going to take a look at the Perfect Landscape, which has added in several new skies. And I think this is a great one. Now here's a nice picture of the Sphinx over in Egypt. There's one of the pyramids hiding back there. It's a little bit dull. This guy is very boring, which is typical for Egypt. Let's see if we can improve this and make it a more fascinating picture. To get it, edit. And we're in the special edits section. And perfect landscape is right over here, right side. Click on that one and we'll load this in. And there's several options with this. We can crop in or straighten. I don't need that on this particular picture. We can remove haze. I'll give this a shot. This tends to increase the contrast a little bit. So click on remove haze. That's a little nicer. It improves our contrast a bit. Now below that we have a lot of different skies in here. A whole bunch of these blue skies, sunny skies, sunsets, some nighttime shots. We'll try some of this. Let's just try just a basic blue sky and see what happens. When you do the first one, it's going to go through, find the horizon and identify the sky area and then use it to create a mask and puts the sky behind the mask. 
And that's not too bad, but it's kind of boring. There's nothing really spectacular about that. Let's see what else we have down over here. See a rainbow there, not really appropriate for Egypt. I'll try this one here. Sunny six. Yeah, this looks got a bit more color going on in here. Maybe too dramatic, I think. Let's come down and we'll try one of these sunset colors. Let's get some oranges in here, which may look a little bit nicer. We'll try this one down here, sunset one. Now that's pretty believable. Let's try sunset two, a bit more color on sunset two. Maybe a few more clouds, might be a bit nicer. Now that's really interesting. That's a very dramatic image and has some nice coloration in here. Now once you have your basic sky, you can come down further and adjust the opacity. It's a full opacity right now. What this does is it lowers the opacity of the new sky and you see the old sky through. It kind of blends the two skies together. So I'll back up just a little bit. You also can adjust your brightness and go brighter or darker in there. I think a little bit brighter on this one. And you can auto match the color tone of your foreground to your new background. We'll try that and see how that goes. And that's nice. I think this looks really great. We can move things around if we need to, but I don't need to here. We also can shift our edges. Don't need to. Refine the edge again. We don't need to do that. And there's no spot healing needed as well. So everything else is just fine. But I think this is a real nice improvement on this image over the original image just by using this perfect landscape with some of these new looks over here in the sky. There's lots of new skies to play with, which is a great addition to this fun little tool here, which really can help you add some zing into your pictures quickly and easily. Okay, once you're happy with this, come down, click on the next button, and we'll go over to expert mode right here. You see how this happened. It came in, we put a sky gradient. This was our first option. Here is our sky foreground, second option. I can actually bring that out if we're not really using it. Here's the copy of the original. And it used this to create a mask up here to work with these backgrounds. And then it compiled all this up into a new layer up here. If I uncheck that, notice that notice we don't lose anything in here. That's just into layers down beneath. But if you want it all merged in one layer, that's what this top layer is right there. So if you want to make your changes or adjustments, make sure you uncheck that or hide that top layer. You can then change the layers down here. One of the guided edits that has seen some improvement here in Photoshop Elements 2023 is the Perfect Portrait. Let's take a fast look at that over here, guided, and that's right here, Perfect Portrait. Let me show you what they've done. Over here in Expert Mode, up under Enhance, and right down here we have Open Closed Eyes and Adjust Facial Features. These have both now been added into that Perfect Portrait tool over in Guided Edit, which I think makes a lot of sense. Let's go ahead and see how that works. Go over here to Guided and Perfect Portrait. I'll have that one selected. There we go. And then it opens it up over here, right-hand side. Now there's quite a few options. Notice that it identifies the face first off. It can then zoom in on the face. You can move the picture just by dragging it like that. Here we go. Step one, smooth skin. It's up to you if you want to do that or not. I'm not going to bother. You can increase contrast. I prefer doing this over in expert mode. You have more control over there. But here is one of those new features. And that's the facial features, which we just took a look at over in expert mode. Click on this, it then opens up that dialog box right here, the facial features dialog box, which allows you to adjust the lips, eyes, nose, face shape, and face tilt. It's mostly designed and works best on faces that are straight on, but it will work here on this kind of a three quarter view as well. Let's just increase our smile a little bit and you'll see how that changes the smile. Make just a little bit more of a smile. It goes too far, it gets kind of weird looking, but just a little bit more is not bad. We can go to the eyes in here and open the eyes up a bit by increasing the height just a touch and the size just a little bit, just a touch. I think that's just a little bit larger. There we go. And I think everything else looks just fine on that. When you're happy, choose OK and you're still in the perfect portrait tool here inside of Guided Edit. That's the nice thing about this. It actually brings this other tool into the perfect portrait tool. We also have the open closed eyes that's now been added in here. Let me show you that one. I'm just going to cancel out of here and back over to expert mode. And I have this other picture here with these closed eyes. Now, normally what you want for this is you want to have two pictures of the same person looking at the camera in the same way. One with the eyes closed, maybe the person blinked, and the second one eyes open. You can then take the eyes from the open eyes picture and put them onto the closed eyes picture. In this case, I found this one photograph which actually works out very well with one of the default eye options in here. Let's take a look at that over here. Enhance, and that's right here, open closed eyes. Normally it's standalone right here, but this has now been added over into the Perfect Portrait over in Guided. Again, I think this is a good choice on their part. There's the face. We can zoom in. So we now have our control of the face if we want to. All of our standard tools in here, remove blemishes, stuff like that. But here's the open closed eyes. Brings up that tool just like this. There we go. And this one picture here actually works out well and shows you how this works. 
So it takes the eyes from this photograph and puts them onto this photograph. Now this works best if the flesh tones are very similar, the face shape is very similar, and then it does a good job. For instance, if I choose this one, it's just kind of odd looking, but it gives you a good idea of how this works. So if you have good matching pictures, and again, hopefully you have the same picture, same person, eyes closed and eyes open, and it does that. The important part here is that this is now included as part of this perfect portrait tool here inside of Guided Edit, and I think that's a very good choice. Photoshop Elements 2023 has added in some new backgrounds into the Guided Edit Change Background tool. Let's go ahead and take a look and see what we've got. Okay, go into Guided Edits. It's over here under Special Edits, and right there, Replace Background. Okay, click on this, and we'll see what we have over here on our options. Now, the first thing you need to do is you need to select out the foreground subject. I'll try just the Select Subject button and say, well, this does, this works out pretty well, especially on something like this. And there we go. That looks real nice. Nice, clean selection. That's fine. We can then choose a new background, import a photo, or we can come down here, none, color. And what I'm curious about are these new presets in here. And here we go. Here are some of these new interesting background presets. This is what's new here. Let's just go ahead. We'll try one of these. I think I'll try that one. Let's see how that looks. Interesting, you can't really see these lines in the thumbnail, so you'll have to try each one. Not too bad, kind of fun look to that one. That's pretty good as well. And we'll give them all a try and see which one we like the best. Did that one already. Here's that image and it's an advertising poster. Don't care for that one or that one or that one right there. I think we'll go with this one here, possibly that. And I think we'll go with this one right there. There we go. Okay, choose okay. So there it is. There's our new background so you can play with inside of the change background. And it does a great job. And of course, the select subject is very good at pulling your subject, which makes this a very easy to use tool. And once we've done that, we can come down here and you have a few more options at the move tool, change your position of your foreground or background subject. We can refine the edge if we need to. Don't need to in here. We can auto match our color tone. Again, not needed for this particular image. Come down to next, then choose where you wanna go with this. After this, either save it, save as, print it out to Fujifilm Prints and GIFs, go over to Flickr or Twitter, or what I normally do is just go to in expert mode, take it back over to expert, and then I can do whatever I want over here. Notice how the background comes in as a separate layer right here, which means at this point I can change this to anything else that I want as well. So I have that additional option once I'm inside of expert mode. As always with these guided edits, we don't have as many options as I would like in here, but it's not bad, there are quite a few. Now, if you wanna have more options, of course you can change the background using our graphics. Now, if you do that, I like to always preserve my original image, so here is how you do that. Come down here, right-click on background, choose duplicate layer, choose okay. This is now my safety, I'm just gonna name this one safety. I'll hide that one, so if I mess up, I can always come back to that one image. We can now change our background. I'll hide this one up here. Change our background. We already have the overlay taken care of here. So come down to graphics and we're by type, which is right here and backgrounds right here. And then all of these backgrounds are available to use in that same location. Let's just find something kind of interesting. Maybe some fall colors right down here. I'll try this one. There we go. Do one more in here, something a bit different. Try that one there and there it is. Go back over to layers and you'll see how this now has changed the background to that new look. If you wanna try something else and still keep this one here, easy to do, use that same trick, right click where it says background, duplicate the layer, choose okay, hide that layer, and then come down and change your background. Again, let's just try something different. I'll go for this one right here. There we go, back to our layers. And I can now try those different layers in here. So here's that layer, there's that layer, here's this layer. So I now have some options but using that initial option up here to change your background saved me some time. And we do have some fun choices in there that are not available over there in the graphics backgrounds. Okay, if you like this video, hit that like button, click on share, click on subscribe. Check out my complete training course for Photoshop Elements. The link for that is right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.